Hello and welcome to Floyd Models Kit View Time. Today we've got Ryfield Models new release. This is a 135th scale Strum Tiger. And doesn't it look absolutely fantastic? Nice little bit of box work there. Apparently there's a photo going around uh, that this artwork comes from and it shows uh, a USGI stood on top of it after it being captured. Okay, so I think that's where that bit of box art's coming from. Anyway, it does say it's got workable tracks, which is quite a nice touch. Okay, as you can see on the side, you do get a limited bit of interior. So obviously you've got a little bit up here in the turret and looking down. So although you don't get a full interior, the bit where you're going to be looking down into it, you can see. So that actually is quite a nice touch with that one. Uh, looking around on here, you see your kit number is 5035 and it is available from the PM store for a measly £44. Okay, some of your marking options that you've got on there as well. So that's actually quite a nice touch. And just the same on the other side. So in the box, which does feel incredibly stuffed, and it is, you can see we've got various parts. So we've got a one-piece hull, so we've got a little bit of detail down in there. We've got the actual road wheels. Match pair again for the weaponry. Okay, match pair again for more suspension and various things and then separate bags everything and we've got a couple of bags of tracks in uh, zip bags which is quite a nice touch we've got another separate bag down in here more uh, track links and pins we assume just down in there like that okay top turret and then other parts you see lots of parts down in it more shells so you're certainly getting your money's worth of plastic down in here okay as you can see so forth and onwards. So we've got some clear parts down in there we'll have a look at the moment. We've got a lovely piece of photo etch by the looks of it. That's quite nice. And then as always, we've got the instructions. So we'll start with the instructions, working our way through. So you can see a little bit obviously about down in there. We've got your parts, call outs, and all your various things going in there. And then generally working our way through. So again, it's got limited interior detail as we could see. Okay, so we've got various parts going down in there right the way through. We've got some of this bracing uh, for the actual uh, uh, racks, I suppose, uh, for the shelves going on the top there and onto the sides. Okay, so really you're just working this top turret lining the inside of it. So you've got various details all the way down in there. So really the top turret is detailed right the way through. So looking through down to the bottom, that's what we're on about, you can see pretty much. We've got the gun breech and the mantle system obviously all being fitted down in there. Talking about the shelves, obviously it's multi part shells which is quite nice with that one and then working our way down through all of those as you can see uh, suspension arms going right the way through as we know it's got sort of torsion bar suspension system on this one which should be workable as well for nice for posing it and things like that so all of those being fitted down into those ones again we have got various details quite nice i have got the radio equipment looks like that is fitted down in there so really it's just the actual driver's seat I don't think is done which is a bit weird because everywhere else is okay anyway working our way through we've got the floor sections going on the top there and then obviously all the parts coming through you see some very nice details on this one going in here nice easy to follow instructions right the way through talking about the actual uh, jack system as well so we've got that one down in there and all the other parts down in this one all the storage equipment okay nice details got some photo etch holding these in as you can see for the placements on the side and everything else like that road wheels being fitted down into there and the idlers and things being fitted into drive sprockets things like that all of those being fitted down onto this one then we're working on the top with the grill system over the engines and then obviously about the positioning of the shells down and how they lock in again onto the actual lower hull section okay top turret basically being fitted onto this one it's not really a turret i suppose it doesn't rotate but you know what i mean okay so you've got the back plate and then obviously the forward system being fitted in this one we've got a nice little bit of ladder to the drives obviously the more the weapon systems cross section coming across here so you can see how the various parts lay out again very nice touch with that one and then working our way through the next sections bringing in the actual floor sections onto the top turret things like that as you can imagine right the way through a lot of these are saying not gluing so we're assuming that obviously you can actually have them as a lift off part which would be a nice touch and then that way you can actually see down into this showing off that detail because without it you're not going to see much just looking through a normal hatch but having this ability to actually remove this section uh really is a very nice touch okay track links so there you go you're going to be making up 96 aside for this one but they are sort of workable but you've got separate guides so they're going to be a mismatch but at least you have got pins from both sides all too often we see these and it's a single sided pin which means they just fall apart as soon as you pick them up okay other parts being fitted on the hatches things like that then we've actually got the uh, crane 
being fitted onto the side as well, the lifting crane, and then obviously what the color call outs courtesy of Mick. Very nice of him to do that. Okay, so there we go. You've got the desert versions or two sort of normal uh, tricolor ones right the way through. And you get a nice bit of box on the back as well. So that's quite a nice touch having that as well. Okay, so next we've got the photo etch. And again, I just fire up my close the camera, as you can see. Nice details with the photo etch. Various nice parts showing through. And then on the back side, we've got a couple of caps, a little bit of wire down in here, and obviously the decals, which won't be much at all, to be honest. Come for the weapons, a couple of crosses, things like that. Photo edge looks very nice, looks very thin, if I'm honest. And whilst we're here, we've got the clear parts, which is to say, you've got this top section, if you can see it in there, uh, is all in clear. I'm not a fan of this. I would paint it and then obviously just use the gap bit in here to go through, but that's what that is. And then obviously you've got some various things for the sort of periscopes and cupolas and things like that down in there, like that one. Okay, so let's start with the turret. Down in here. Okay, so the turret itself doesn't look too bad at all. So Again, we're just, again, that's quite nice. You can see this is what Ryfield do very well, this texturing. Hopefully you're catching it there in the light. I know the camera doesn't like to paint ball with reflectives, but you can see it's got that little bit of texture to it. Okay, catching it all the way around, this cast texting. Very, very nice, there we go. Actually, that's beautifully done. Again, it's an area where I just feel Ryfield have just nailed it first time out we've got another sprue inside there as you can see but generally on the inside we have got some ejector pins down in here but because of the angle you're not going to see that okay the rest of it is all nice cleanly done but Ryfield seem to have put their money in textures in the plastic and it's just paying dividends because their Shermans are beautifully done and this guy is as well so really very very nicely done with that one but again the welding beads the bolts the things like that it all just stacks up it looks good scale it looks very nicely done right the way through and again just generally it's all seems to be very much in proportion so congratulations in there right so how are we going to do this this is going to be fun you can see it's running out of room rapidly so let's have a look at the lower hole seeing as we've got these out i can even get in So down in here, this again is a chunky, solid piece of plastic. You have got some little mold marks down in there like that, but it is a good solid detailing. Again, when you look at the amount of detail that's just down in this part, okay, and on the inside for that torsion bar suspension system to go in there, beautifully done, no problem with that at all. Round on the front, again, the well beading looks very nicely done in these. So looking at these beads running all the way down in here, it just works very nice. You catch it in the light like that, it just absolutely works. You've got your escape hatches underneath and things. Very nice indeed, so good. But that is proper solid. There's no bend in that whatsoever. So, right, okay, just whilst they're here, okay, we're doing slightly out of order, I know, but this is the shells. Okay, so as I say, you've got an empty shell if you wanted to, or you can have it with the head on, as I say, we'll look at those in a moment. But again, the good detailing on the back here, nicely done, and you get a full bag of these. Okay, so very nicely done with those as well. Right, okay, let's get into it. So, in no particular order, we've got into it even there we go so sprue a again lots of stuff going on in here typical rye field this molding business of uh, textures right the way through all of this again which is very nice if we start up here at the top hopefully you can see it in there beautiful done like the wood texting the graining these bolt heads on here are really sharp good crisp detail the sprue gates again particularly nice and fine refined ones big ones where it doesn't matter but the smaller parts are very nicely done indeed okay so working our way down as you can see we've got some of the actual turret areas down here on the back so what we're talking about this texture the cast texture thing very nicely done on all of those okay working on the other side so we've got the sort of front mantle for the gun system from the inside 
again very nicely done and then actually the mantle itself this circular one with the bolt heads and the details on all those parts very nicely done indeed and on the back side good clean sharp molding all of these parts can't find a fault with that we have got some ejector pins in various areas but this is the inside so like down in here there we go you can see it just over there they're flush easily to remove okay but generally very nice all of that indeed okay over on the other side okay. it's going to be one of these kits that will just keep giving so sprue f as you can see so we've got some of the sides we've got the drive sprockets we've got the tow cables the various things going on here so those sprockets again sharp crisp detail on all of those that cable system this plating sort of door system again it's very nicely done on both sides okay working your way down some of the small parts some of the guides filters a normal tiger part so we say this is standard tiger one parts a lot of these i don't think we find on this particular one okay so there we go but again it is the same lower hull set and again on the blind side very nicely done so we are going to get some crossover of parts down in here So over here on sprue L, some more of this really very nice parts. Again, you're catching it in the light. It is very good, sharp. It's a point where these are, you need to stab yourself with these. Very nicely done. Right the way down and in. And the bolt textures and these textures down in here for these clips on the inside. And this floor is proper anti-slip checkerboard type thing very nice indeed the edging the tools the sides again there's nothing really to fault on this we've got a couple of these larger you can see them down in here these large ones you just ping them and they come off they're not a problem they just flip them and they go okay so they're on it but apart from that we'll look at tracks in a moment okay so screw oh We have some of the stowage items. So down here on sprue O oh, straight away as you can see. Again, this is Tiger One generic. So we've got cans. These are the stowage bins on the back of the turret. So obviously you're not going to use, but a lot of obviously the stowage equipment you can see down here. Pulleys, jacks, pry bars, axes, hammers, things like that. Pretty much standard for both types. Okay, and again on the back. Right the way through. Okay. Whilst we've got a little one, I don't think we really need to get this guy out. But as you can see, again, nice textures on there. Right the way through on that one on sprue E. Okay, match pair. You know, I assume this is generic Tiger 1. Because it's the uh, idlers and things. Torsion bar suspension system, as we said before. Okay, so that's just down in here. So this is sprue D of a generic, and as you can see up here, right the way through. Some of them obviously you're going to be using, some aren't. We'll just look around them all. Torsion bar suspension down at the bottom, as we were saying. The uh, drive, things like that. All the smaller parts. You can see how nicely done these tiny little parts are, but these sprue gates are absolutely minute. Tiny, tiny, tiny. It's what we're saying. Some of them are quite big, but it doesn't matter. That's on the big bits. The small bits where it counts, they are very, very small indeed. Very nice. So match pair on that one. Then we've got, uh, whilst we're doing wheels, we'll just do the other one. We'll get it and we really need to get these out. Standard Tiger wheels. So it's the road wheels, steel wheels on this one. Right the way through. We've got a little bit of rubber on the outside, I think, for anti-slip. And again, on the other side. Very nice one. So two of those with sprue X. And then down in here, we will look in here. We've got another match pair, as you can see, on sprue C. So this is the racks. Can we go straight in the close up, as you can see? The shell heads. Okay. And then obviously all the parts and the racks and everything, really, for the shells. 
So again, very nicely done and on the back. See all of those. Very good indeed. So very nice. Okay, last up tracks. So as you say, you can see them in here. This is just your pins and your roll of the guides. They're all separate. That's going to be fun. You do get template down in here, a little jig for knocking them up and getting them all together and everything else. But yeah, hours of fun. And then obviously we've got the tracks, two lots of them in bags. And they're each individuals. But it is workable. It's no different from doing metal, I suppose, at the end of the day. It's just going to be a lot of work in here. But the holes are all very nicely done. One of the perks to doing the plastic ones over the actual metal is at least you haven't got to open up all the holes because normally they're pretty good in these. Again, you've got two giant bagfuls of these just to keep you busy all the way through. So there we have it. Obviously, it's just an upgrade onto their standard Tiger, but you know that's really nice at the best times. Obviously, for me, the big thing that stands out to me is this texture uh, on the turret and on all the parts. It is something that Ryfield just adds. And the great thing about it is that it's all plastic weathering right the way through because your paintwork will reflect it. And again, you can just do very simple washes and things like that over it, and it makes it really pop. A little bit of dry brushing even, if you want to just bring those edges out, and it's absolutely there. And it's very difficult to try and recreate that type of cast texture just by hand going through. Yes, obviously you can get your Dremel out and carve into it, and sand into it and all the rest of it. But if it's there, it just saves a lot of work and it's an instant step up. So when you are coming in with any type of weathering, it's just gonna pop and look absolutely fantastic. It's a lovely piece of kit and it is a lovely kit at the end of the day. So if you are into your Tigers, it's definitely gonna fit very much into your family with that one. So there we go. That is the Sturm Tiger 135th scale by Rifle Models.